Welcome to Our Canada, Our Future. I'm Aaron Woodrick. On today's episode, we're going to be talking about the interplay between Indigenous rights and environmental activism and what some view as an attempt by the latter to interfere with the former and what some Indigenous critics are calling eco-colonialism. And to discuss this issue, I'm very pleased to be joined by Chris Sankey, who's a senior fellow at the Macdonald Laurie Institute and president of Blackfish Enterprises. Chris, I want to thank you so much for joining me today. Thanks for having me. I thought, Chris, maybe we could just start by uh, maybe talking a bit about yourself, explaining your roles in the community, both in, uh, in politics and in business. Yeah, right now I'm uh, your advisor to industry and Indigenous. Uh, I currently uh, co-facilitate an all uh, Indigenous leadership table where we look at uh, traditional knowledge, uh, political risk, uh, and a path forward. Uh, so uh, a lot of that is looking at common interests. So it's, uh, it's, it's key. And I think uh, it's important to note that this is a part of social innovation. Okay. Now, I, as I mentioned off the top, um, there's, a, there's a critique of some of uh, environmental activism, sort of uh, co-opting Indigenous interests, sort of advance their own agenda. And, and the term eco-colonialism, I know, is something that you've used in the past. So maybe you could sort of explain uh, to us, what, what do you mean by eco-colonialism? What, what does that term refer to? Well, it's uh, just a modern day Indian act. Uh, you know, it's uh, a bunch of white individuals uh, trying to tell indigenous people how to live and take care of the land. Uh, you know, they're coming in trying to push their uh, uh, green agenda without no input from the indigenous communities trying to force down our throats what, what and how we should be taking care of our, our backyard. I think indigenous people have been taking care of the environment and growing the economy uh, since time immemorial. I always like to tell people, you know, Indigenous people have been in business for the last 10,000 years. Uh, it's just now we just got back on track. Right, fair enough. And I mean, I guess, I guess that leads to my next question is when we talk about uh, eco-colonialism, in what ways is that activism hurting Indigenous people in Canada? Oh, they, they claim to be allies of the Indigenous uh, face, but and in reality, um, they're actually hurting our reputation. They're hurting the relationships. Uh, they are, they've been able to win the battle in mainstream media where they provoke uh, public interest that somehow Indigenous people are against development. And that's simply not true. Uh, the vast majority of us want responsible resource development. We just want to be able to do it on our terms. Uh, back in the day, they used to be able to try and fit a round peg in a square hole, and it just didn't work. And so now, any time that I, since I can remember, uh, Indigenous people are the face of the next uh, major projects in, in this country. And, in, and eco-activism has been uh, killing significant amount of projects in this country, and it's hurting the, the economic and social well-being of our communities. Um, so it's, it's, they just, they need to move on. I don't know how many times Indigenous leaders in this country have told these activists to leave our territories and leave our challenges unto ourselves. And if we got uh, internal disputes, if there's disagreements, let us solve that. Nobody else is going to solve that but us. Yeah, fair enough. Um, you know, speaking of the activism, I know earlier this year, of course, we had a big protest here in Ottawa, the, the Freedom Convoy that was protesting for several weeks in Ottawa. And there was some concern about foreign funding of, uh, of those protesters. A lot of that's turned out not to be true. But I think you'd also made an observation elsewhere that um, if we're going to talk about foreign funding of activism, we should probably talk about it in the environmental sense as well. So what is your understanding of where a lot of the funding for environmental activism comes from? Oh, it's, it's coming from uh, the Getty family in Beverly Hills, California. Uh, they, I mean, it's no secret. It's just bizarre that people would think that foreign funding is okay. Foreign funding is okay if it's done responsibly. I'm not against that, but these eco-activists have been able to do one thing, and that's gain money from an interest group that wants to shut down Canada's natural resource development sector. Uh, and it's with intent and it's with strategic moves in this country and it needs to stop. People want to complain uh, about the Freedom Convoy and somehow they were foreign funded when the reality is that the vast majority of the money that was raised in the Freedom Convoy came right from Canadians, whereas 90 plus percent of the funding that's coming in from uh, the old growth forest campaign, save the old growth forest campaign is coming from 
the United States. And it's easy for people to say that oh, we, we don't have a problem with foreign funding. Well, they're not the ones having to live with this and having to fight these battles every day to get rid of them.